What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. I'm so happy to have our first business owner in Sonoma County here with us. I'm with Chris. He's the owner of 101 Hauling. And today we're just going to kind of give you guys a rundown of what he does, what his day-to-day -day looks like, how we got into the business and all that. So stay tuned. All right. So I'm here with Chris, 101 Hauling. And uh, Chris, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thanks awesome. for having me. We're in his great location here in Rohnert Park, California. Um, so let's just start by how you got in, what do you do, just kind of the, the background of everything. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, one on one hauling is a uh, relatively new company. We're in our first year. Um, it started as an idea, which most things do. Um, and one thing we didn't talk about earlier, by the way, just as a side note is, um, one of the things I did for many years also was the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I was on the board of directors and Shortly after getting my license, uh, I was president at a young age as well. So um, being in, in the local community, uh, <laughs> business development, yeah. and working with small business owners is something I've been doing for a long time. Yeah. Um, but I had to take a break because it was just, um, you can only do so many things, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, 101 Hauling came about as simply just an idea, but it was more because of a, a service. You know, uh, there, was a, there was a need for the service in the marketplace. One, um, and the immediate need was for the properties that I manage. I'm a full-time property manager. I've been in the real estate business for a long time. Uh, <laughs> being involved in that arena, we're dealing with people moving in, people moving out, people moving away, um, and a lot of rental properties. Tenants moving in and out, or evictions, which is unfortunate, but it's part of the deal. Um, foreclosures, we have to clean up properties. So we were already been doing that for years. I just um, didn't have it set up for the general public. It's just part of the service that we already provided. So with uh, property management, it's um, sort of a trifecta, if you will. You have, um, you have leasing, which is a sales function. You have accounting. And then you have maintenance. And they're all working together all the time. Yeah. at the same time and the maintenance is a big portion of it so as property managers we're responsible for hiring firing uh, building relationships with vendors and taking care of the properties so you got to take care of the properties take care of the people so that means take care of the landlord the owner yeah. taking care of the tenants we have a responsibility to tenants too it's not one-sided yeah uh, and finding good vendors it's hard and then when you do find a good vendor they're busy because they're good. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> when you find a good vendor, uh, the contractors, um, they get busy, they're taking on large jobs, and then either the prices go up or they take on large jobs and then they're just so busy, they, they can't tend to the small little things anymore, the small jobs. So that is just a constant challenge, it's a constant struggle for the things um, that I deal with every day. So relationship with real estate agents, ongoing process you know we're in the same uh, same space same marketplace yeah. uh, meeting meeting contractors meeting vendors um, but when we're dealing with vendors contractors they're third-party contractors they're not employees mm -hmm. so you can only do so much yeah. it's built on relationship it's built on the track record um, real estate agent you're gonna have um, pest you know pest inspections uh, lenders work with appraisers uh, contractors you have all the cleaning people all these different vendors who you have to use, you build a team, you're working together in a sense, but they don't work for you. Yeah. <laughs> they work with you. Yeah. Um, so you have to build up relationships. Um, and one of the tough parts is finding good quality contractors, good quality vendors. So as a result, uh, one of my friends and uh, one of my business partners now, he started a construction company because we had that need. I wanted to have more control, somebody quote, um, closer to home mm -hmm. who I could really build a relationship with and take care of the properties. Yeah. Um, in addition to the landscapers, um, house cleaners, carpet cleaners, etc. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the services was junk removal, debris removal. You get properties at all stages. Some of them are turnkey, professionally clean, here are the keys, take it. Some of them are ugly situations. The tenant's still in there, they have to get out. Um, so I have to take over the property, clean it up um, financially, <laughs> clean it up literally. 
once they move out, we get stuck with the whole property clean out. So we were already doing these things and uh, between myself, uh, my family as well, my, my brother and my, my stepdad was helping me on some jobs, some things I decided to do on my own. I started working on cleaning some of the properties myself because I had a shortage of dependable vendors. Uh. So I literally have a leaf blower in the Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> I have a broom, I have bags, I have gloves. I wasn't afraid to, afraid to get my hands dirty. Yeah. Um, so I was doing some of those things just to get the properties turned over quicker. Mm. And then now, thankfully, as a result, we have, um, let's say the team is larger. They're not my employees, but it's a, it's a contractor. Yeah. And that contractor now has three full-time people. So now they could do the light bulbs, the smoke alarms, um, door handles, but also deal on larger yeah. projects. So that's kind of the backstory there. Uh, but then <clears throat> the one service that's always necessary, no matter what, was junk removal. Yeah. And that's just property cleanup. So um, the idea came about right around after, after the fires. That was sort of the, the idea where it came about. What could I do together with my brother, with my stepdad, something that they could do and help me out and make a little bit extra money, but also help us you know, take care of the properties. Mm -hmm. And what do I like to do? It was just an idea. So um, <laughs> one of the real reasons, I've had to move in the past. So you look at, um, <laughs> picture yourself as being the ideal customer for your business, right? And so me, I was my ideal customer at one point. Didn't have a truck. I didn't have the Tahoe. I lived in a townhouse. I had garbage piled up. We were moving. I don't want to bother friends. I just don't, don't want to bother family. I didn't have a truck, I didn't have a trailer. I had a moving moving truck that we had to rent. And I rented um, little utility trailers from Action Rents many times. And I know for a fact there were $42, $43, 24-hour rentals. Mm. So I would do that when I was cleaning up the property or yard debris or whatnot. So I knew how much um, time and effort went into it, plus the cost. You need a pickup to pull the trailer, unless you have a pickup. And then the gas, have to make it out to the dump. When you're all done, you have to go return the equipment. <laughs> or you get friends and family to help you out. Got to buy them a tool pack. Got to buy them pizza. Yeah, yeah. It's like nothing free, right? Um, but I, I'm just the kind of person where I like to do things on my own. Mm. Um, I don't want to bug people. I don't want to borrow trucks. I'd rather go rent it. It's just if somebody has a Sunday, let them enjoy their Sunday. Yeah. This is my problem, you know, my stuff. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I know what's involved in it. And uh, I just started thinking about it like, man, this stuff is more people could use this. So then I had this idea just to, to create a completely separate company uh, named 101 Hauling, and I came up with that name just by staying up late, which I've done many times in the past, uh, checking websites, checking do domains. I got lucky. I found that one, something that was unique, um, something that was fitting. I was able to design the, um, the original draft for the logo and the, the company colors. Yeah. Then I sent it off to a, a designer um, on Fiverr, Fiverr.com, and they took care of the, the final graphics. They, they took my idea and made it into that simplistic Perfect. style now. Yeah. Uh, and I just got to work. <laughs> so kind of like you. Yeah. You know, I try to be like you. A little bit of everything. Um, That's great. I know we spoke a little bit off camera about social media and how like our relationship kind of formed. Explain how social media has really like grown your, or how has it helped your business? Oh, well, it's practically been everything uh, since day one, although uh, I, I'm still about old school marketing, okay? Yeah. Uh, this one was, this particular business uh, as a startup has been easier, if not the easiest go, just, just because of my experience, um, but because also of social media. So with social media, I am fortunate, was fortunate that I already had a large network. But I, I'm going back to 2008 when Facebook was a baby. You know, I was had a Facebook business page, you know, personal uh, business page yeah. way back then, 2008, 2009. Yeah. Uh, MySpace was still around. Yeah. Um, Plaxo uh, was around, and I was doing email marketing. So I had a very large um, network to begin with. And then with the property management business, I think we're 4,500, 4,600 
uh, likes on the business page, but that's growth over four years, so it's right. not it's not overnight by, right, by any right, means. Right. Uh, so it's been able to grow, and I was just able to sort of a an offspring, if you will, or just a value added uh, service. So have this separate company to provide a service to the public. Uh, it's been great. So social media, yeah, I started that uh, the Instagram account. Like everybody starts with zero, yeah, one. Um, with MySpace, everybody had Tom as a friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Tom. I started with zero, and I was just, just be active. Uh, get involved in, be involved with uh, the groups that matter. Okay? Local. Real estate. Um, yeah. Okay. It's just, it's been great, and I've been able to connect. As a matter of fact, short story, yesterday I was at a property, uh, a new property that I'm taking over for management, but I also, here's how they work together. I have a new property that uh, I'm taking over for management. I'm doing the move out for the tenants who just moved out. I went in, I met with them before they moved out, did the inspection. They're moving out of state. They loaded up their truck and they're going Alabama, I think. Well, in the process of doing that, I say, hey, if you guys get overwhelmed, you need to throw away your, your junk, right? Get my car. It's also what we do. Sure enough, three separate trips. I mean, for them, they had so much stuff. And so the tenant became a paying customer. And then now they're out. And just Saturday, I did the final load. Yesterday, I went back. And through the Instagram connections, there's a real estate agent out in um, Bodega Bay area. They drove out. Uh, I waited for them. They came out to the property yesterday to pick up a, a furniture piece. And that's because... I did a video, the before and after video. She happened to see this white cabinet and she says, I really want that for myself. I never met her. I have no idea who she is. But coincidentally, her husband is an arborist. He's in the construction business, you know? He's in the field. So he comes with this big truck and we're talking. Yeah. Um, and he needs help with, you know, the properties that he's working in. He, has, he does tree work and then hauls that away. But just overall, uh, property cleanup, he gets... It's networking. Yeah. Um, social media is <clears throat> is very powerful. It could be very cheap if you put in the hustle, which is ours, because you're going to pay for it one way or another. Yeah. Or it could be very hands off. You just pay for it with advertising, which now it's it's a paid platform. Yeah. Uh, back back in the day, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, it was you publish, everybody gets it. Yeah. Uh, and now it's spam. These algorithms. Um, yeah. So that's changed over time, but uh, I still stick to the. Uh, coffee cards, ten dollar gift uh, gift cards. Yeah. Personal meetings yeah. and um, what you're doing. It's been great because yeah. we connected online. Yeah. One of my great connections I met online too. Yeah, I know that's what I wanted to talk about. It's like it's so. It's like word of mouth on steroids because as your business, it's essentially what would you say eighty seventy percent word of mouth, something like that. Um. Uh, no. Uh, no. Right now, as a startup, um, I have uh, advertising on Yelp. So I, I just started that, by the way. So you're doing some paid stuff. Uh, very minimal. I've always, my philosophy has always been low cost or no cost. You know, just get creative. Like, we were talking about the magnets earlier. Yeah. Um, so we take a business card and stick it to a magnet. Now you have a magnetic business card. Super cheap, like $10 investment. Um, the, the Yelp ads, less less than 300 yeah. per month it's like 10 bucks a day um so but that's that's making the phone ring and yeah. it's turning into closed business because yeah. they're very targeted yeah. but um as this grows and we go into the second year yes it, it will become um heavily uh, referrals yeah. and network but it's those come with relationships and what that's called is um resellers so you, you form you form business relationships with people who could you, you could do transactions with over and over and over. Like your um, your home inspectors or your pests, you find hitmen, you find this person, home guard. Once you find a good relationship, you're gonna call them over and over and over. Yeah. So it'll become transactional. Exactly. They're just not, they're not one hitters. Yeah. Um, and, but it takes time. Yeah. It takes time and <laughs> yeah. you have to meet the people and then develop a, a track record and then that builds trust. Yeah. And then once you trust them, then they'll bend over back, backwards to to serve you yeah. because you're feeding them more business. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yep. And it's just, it's a big cycle that keeps going. So you've been in the business world for
for a long time in just a few short words if you could give someone you know a little bit of information or to like to help people out to get into the business world in a couple words what would you tell them a uh, couple things off the top of my head pick something that you love that you actually enjoy doing believe it or not i enjoy loading up the trailer and driving around I could be doing worse things. <laughs> so I actually enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it. It's kind of a separation from my office job. Yeah. Uh, do something that you actually enjoy because you're going to be putting a lot of hours into it and you may not see results right away. So you yeah. have to stick it out. Exactly. Um, if you don't like it, it's not worth doing. Um, that and being able to put in the hours and then trying to find something that has little competition. Try to be the big fish in the small pond if you can. Yeah. Or be in the pond world there's only a few fish yeah. um i chose the junk removal business because there are not many players in the space that yeah. are professional that i would consider yeah. professional i could think of two maybe three yeah um whereas other industries are just flooded with service providers so many choices but you have to enjoy it yeah there's too many choices out there yeah that's awesome Cool. Well, Chris, thank you so much My for pleasure. your time. I appreciate it. Tell the people where they can find you on social. Oh, just go to Instagram, uh, one on one hauling. I was lucky because one on one hauling is available across the platforms, Facebook, and then uh, YouTube. Also, the channel. Uh, I was able to secure that. Awesome. Uh, so I think we're we <laughs> episode seven. I think awesome. eight. Cool. Just takes time, man. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's all it is. But I really appreciate the opportunity. You're coming out and. I think your business is going to be doing great. Yeah. Just continue going out there and meeting people and shaking hands. That's it. And then stay connected online, but yeah. person to person's where it's at. That's it. All right, guys, that wraps this one up. Make sure you check Chris out, Instagram, Facebook, all the platforms, YouTube at 101 Hauling, and we'll see you on the next one.